Hello everyone. I hope all of you are well. This is the first time I am uploading a video to my YouTube channel. I am doing this because I want you guys to see my drawings and also tell you a story every now and then in regards to what I am drawing. I am hoping you guys like this format. I am so new to this so please bear with me. Today's story is going to be about Japanese idol Yukiko Okada. Yukiko Okada, whose original name was Kayosaro, was born on August 27, 1967, in Ichinomiya, Aichi, Japan. She was the second daughter of the Sato family. They later moved to Nagoya and decided to make a living there. Yukiko was like any other regular girl. From a very young age, she loved reading mangas and also showed signs of being a very talented artist. She loved to sing and had the dream of becoming an idol. This is something very common among young girls in Japan. They want to become idols. In order for her to reach this goal, she had to fight for it, of course. When she was in junior high, she participated in every possible audition she could find. From major productions to the small and talented recruiters out there, she was fighting for her dream to become a star. Yukiko learned the hard way that the road to stardom was not easy. She was rejected many times until the time finally came. She was eventually accepted in a TV talent program called Star Tanyo on Nippon Television. This was a talent show very similar to Star Search or The X Factor. And the last challenge that she had in this show was to sing in order to get the attention of talent agents. She sent two songs. The first one was My Boyfriend, originally from Kitahara Sawako, and for the final round, Slow Motion, originally sent by Akira Nakamori. And with that, she got the victory in March of 1983. With this, her road to becoming a star was only starting. Yukiko made her debut as an idol in 1984. On April of that same year, she released her first single called First Date or Hajimete no Date. The song was written by Maria Takeuchi, who in recent years became famous because of her viral city pop hit Plastic Love. Maybe you guys already know it. I know I love it, it's an amazing song, whenever I'm doing my drawings or stuff, I'm actually uh, playing it, it just pops up every now and then. Well, but that's an, a story for another video. Yukiko was nicknamed by her fans as Yuko. Her smile was addressed also using the same name, the Yuko smile. It seems everything was going in the right path for Yukiko, as in her debut year, she won Rookie of the Year and on top of that, she was awarded the 26th Japan Record Awards Grand Prix as the best new artist. Singing was not the only talent Yukiko had. In 1985, she made her debut also as an actress playing the leading role in her first television drama called Kinjirareta Mariko, The Forbidden Mariko, where she played Mariko, a girl who possessed psychic and psychokinetic powers who had to face various personal challenges while dealing with her father's criminal background. Yukiko felt on top of the world, being now a very famous idol and actress. But the success did not stop there. On February the 10th, 1986, she reached the number one spot with the song Kuchibiru Network in the Oraikon Weekly Singles Chart. This is like the Japanese version of the Billboard Singles Chart. This song was written by Seiko Matsuda, an idol considered like the Japanese Madonna also called The Eternal Idol, and it was composed by Ryuichi Sakamoto, a prominent Japanese composer. While I'm saying all of this, you might think that Yukiko Okada was certainly very fortunate. 
and that thanks to all of these amazing things that were happening to her, she should have been the happiest girl in the world. But in her mind, something totally different was happening. A few months later, after hitting the number one spot in Japan, something happened. It was April the 8th, 1986. Yukiko was in her Tokyo apartment. The place was filled with gas and her wrist was slashed. She was inside her closet crouching and crying. When the neighbors noticed the smell of gas coming out of her apartment, they notified the apartment's landlord who contacted with the emergency services and they were the ones that found Yukiko in this terrible condition. Yukiko's manager arrived to the scene and took her to the Kitaoyama hospital that was nearby and her injuries were treated. Some music was Yukiko's talent agency. Former managing director Tokyo Fukuda said that the song music founder Hideyoshi Aizawa called him to pick up Yukiko from the hospital. He said that when he met her, she was softly crying. He proceeds to ask her where she wanted to go, giving her several options like her parents' home in Nagoya, her apartment, or the office. Yukiko said that the office was good, and she was brought to the sixth floor of the Sun Music Building. Aizawa called Fukuda, leading him to step out. Two hours later, while Fukuda, the management director, and the staff were discussing on how to avoid media scandal, Yukiko ran to the stairs, took off her shoes, and jumped from the seven-story Sun Music Building resulting in instant death. It was 12.15 p.m. She was 18 years old. The motivations that led to Yukiko's decision to take her own life are still shrouded in mystery. Some theories indicate that it was due to the strict discipline of her talent agency, while others suggest that she was suffering bipolar disorder. Something else that was suggested was that she felt very upset and depressed because of an unhappy love affair with an actor described to be old enough to be her father. Torumi Negishi, he was a co-star in the show Kinjira Reta Mariko. Minegishi said that he thought of her more as a younger sister, but this is also something that is not confirmed. Her suicide caused such a commotion and her fans were so shocked about her untimely death that this resulted in several copycat suicides around Japan. This phenomenon was christened as the Yukiko Syndrome. By April 26, 1986, 23 out of 36 suicides since Yukiko died were also jumping off a building. Most of the suicides were committed by women. It has been suggested that Yukiko may have had in mind idol Yasuko Endo, who also committed suicide by jumping off a rooftop 10 days earlier. Yukiko's family was devastated after her death, even causing the divorce of her parents. A ninth single was scheduled to be released on April 14, 1986, but it was postponed out of fear of causing more suicides. The single, Hanano Image, was eventually released later on. Yukiko's legacy will live on forever. Her music will always be a part of the Japanese music history and her memory will always be alive thanks to her fans. 
if you're interested in listening to her music, don't hesitate to do it, especially if you're someone who enjoys classic J-pop or city pop. You will notice that her music has a feel-good sensation to it with cheerful tunes that makes you want to sing along with it. Also, if you or someone you know is suffering depression or having suicidal thoughts, don't hesitate to contact a professional or the suicide helpline in your area. It's okay to ask for help. Again, I must say thank you all so much for making it until the end of this video and I hope you find my drawings of Yukiko pretty. Well, not drawings, but only a single drawing. Maybe I will do more later on, but I hope you like this one. I wanted to put some wins on her um, because, I don't know, I just think it just suits her. And, and I wanted to make her happy when I wanted to show that side of her happy if you like this video make sure to like comment and subscribe that would help a lot see you later for another drawing and telling goodbye <laughs>